Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. All those kind of things. If you've been here before, you know that I'm on a quest to replace Lightroom and I'm looking for alternatives. I've been looking at things like DxO and On One and several other products. Today I'm doing a first impression video of another product. This is by ACDC and it's called Photo Studio 7 for Mac. It's a bit of a mouthful. I'll just call it Photo Studio or ACDC, but a number of people had recommended it to me. I had heard about it for quite a while and I finally got around to getting it and here I am taking a look at it. So let's just hop into that. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the interface is very familiar and that's because, I mean, how original can you be when you're creating an interface? That's not to pick on ACDC. It's a great product. I've actually really enjoyed it, but I just wanted to point out that your skills and knowledge of other programs will transfer over and you'll, if you begin to use this product, you'll begin to figure out that you can edit in it very powerfully and get into it pretty easily. Now, before I go too far, one thing I do wanna point out is that when I started looking at ACDC, the first thing I saw was that they had three different products, or so I thought, a home version of Photo Studio, a professional version, and then an ultimate. So I was like, well, I want ultimate because I wanna have all the stuff, all the toys, well, it turns out those three versions are for Windows. I'm on a Mac, so I was a little bit scratching my head. I found a Photo Studio for Mac on the website, and I'm like, is this the only thing, or does Ultimate come in Mac flavor too? And it doesn't. So those other products, Home, Professional, and Ultimate, I think that's the names. You can find them on their website. Anyway, that's Windows only. Separately, they have this product for the Mac. Still a good product. The difference is, um, and I had to ask them this, I, was, I couldn't quite figure out what the differences were, but basically this one does not have layers. The ultimate product on the Windows side has layers, and then below that is professional. The Mac version is most similar to professional. I don't know all the differences. I don't care, to be honest, because I have Mac and that's all I got. So I'm gonna keep going. Here we go. So. The nice thing about this product is that it's a file browser or file viewer. One of the reasons I wanna leave Lightroom is I don't like importing all my photos and then building all this catalog stuff and then getting this fat database that I gotta back up as well. That feels like a waste of time. I've got multiple duplicate copies of my photos already. I just wanna quickly browse a photo and start editing. ACDC allows me to do that. So um, this is my desktop. I got a number of things sitting on my desktop, but I've got this demo files folder and I'll go ahead and load that. And you can see it is pulling all the files in that folder, including the sidecar files from photos I previously edited in DxO or in On One, as you can see here. So I'm gonna grab this photo though and I'm gonna edit that in a minute. There's a lot going on here in this photo browser, file browser section. You can see all the different folders on the left-hand side. You can go click and get into different things. On the right-hand side, you've got all kinds of tagging and categorization and rating. You've got keywords. You've even got the opportunity to go in here and click on different years, and it'll pull up the photos from that folder that were taken in that year. So lots of power, not a full tutorial. This is a first impression video, and I should pause and say, I have not had this product very long. I have not played with it very much. I do find it intuitive. I do like it and I do find it powerful, but I don't know the nuances of this product. So just to be clear, this is not a full tutorial, but I do wanna show you how it works. So I've got this photo highlighted. If you wanna go and edit the photo, you go over here to this develop tab and you click on that and it'll bring you into the develop module. And over on the left-hand side, and that's something that's different, most products seem to have their editing tools on the right-hand side. No big deal, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm actually left-handed anyway, but I'm so used to things being on the right now, it feels a little odd, but hey, no problem. On the left-hand side, you've got various tools here. So in fact, I should just close all these so you can kind of see what they're all about. And there we go. So those are your various tools. And also notice you have these tabs up here. I'm on Tune, so that's kind of like your develop module if you're a Lightroom person where you go in and do your basic edits. You've got Detail, where you can come in and apply some sharpening as well as noise reduction, things like that. You've got Geometry, which is nice. It allows you to fix lens distortion. You know, you can crop, straighten, that sort of thing here. And then you've also got Repair, where you can go in and remove spots and that sort of thing. Again, not a full tutorial. I'm not gonna go through all of this. I wanna touch on some of the things that I've been using and having fun with in this product and that I find pretty interesting. So I'm gonna start here on the Tune tab. 
And I'm going to start with general. Uh, one thing I really like is this fill light, and that is kind of like a smart tone in that as I drag it to the right, it is brightening the whole image, but the parts that are darker seem to be getting brightened a little bit more than the stuff that was already kind of bright. That's a nice little slider to have, especially on a photo like this. If I hit reset, you can see uh, it was fairly dark, but fill light is pretty sweet. And you've got other things in here, contrast that I would definitely use here. Um, you don't have highlights and shadows here. You actually have that down here under light EQ, which is the next section I might would go to. Here, you've got a little bit of shadows you can pull up and maybe a little bit of midtones, and maybe I'll pull down the highlights just a little bit. I'm just kind of hacking, to be honest, with this photo. This is not, hey, here's a full editing workflow for this photo. This is me showing you how some of the tools work. Now, while I'm at it, I want to back up one and go to white balance here. Maybe I warm this up just a tiny bit. It was a blue hour. It was a beautiful blue hour, and I love uh, that look, and I like to bring the tint um, up. I usually often will go left with my temperature, but a photo like this that's already so blue, I don't want to do that. There's enough blue, so I'm actually going to the right here and warming it up a little bit, and I'm going to go a little bit more, in fact, and a little bit more on the tint. If you ever want to go look and compare this to your original photo, there's a show original down here. Just click on that, hold it down, and that's my original. Let go, and that's my current state. So I've made pretty good progress already. And again, I'm just kind of hacking around. There's a lot you can do here. There's a lot to unpack. If you think this is interesting, let me know. I'll probably come back and do more videos about this product because I'm having fun. And I have to admit, I have so many products at this point, so many different software products, and I'm kind of exploring a lot of them here, kind of live, if you will, on YouTube. I didn't really expect to get this and say, wow, it's amazing, especially when I realized they had an ultimate and it had layers and then I can't get that because that's Windows only. I expected to be let down a little bit, to be honest, but I'm not. I'm not let down at all. It's a good product. I'm having a lot of fun. I should also say, by the way, you can see the EXIF data here down below. This is an old RAW file from when I shot Nikon. So you can use RAW files, of course. I hope that that's kind of an assumed, but I wanted to clarify because sometimes people are like, hey, does it handle RAW files? And it does. Okay, while I'm at it, I'm going to go to Color EQ. This is kind of your standard HSL kind of panel where you can come in and saturate different colors. I'm on saturation there. Maybe I'll take the blue saturation down a little bit. Just a tad. I do like my blues quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to pull it back a little bit. I just want to reduce it a tiny bit. Maybe I'll take the satura saturation for the yellows up. Maybe a little bit of orange too, just to pull up some of those lights. I don't know if there's much red. Yeah, that, that's coming through as well. I'll do a little bit of that. But I like where I'm at so far with the photo. Once more, there's the original, and that's my current state. Now, anytime you decide you don't want to uh, use the edits or if you want to reset them, you can just hit this double arrow here. You see as a highlight over it, it just says reset this group to the default settings. There's also this tool, or excuse me, this button. It's like a radio button. It says deactivate this group. So I could just click that and it will basically turn off the edits I've made. When I click it again, it turns them back on. So if you want to compare a before and after for a specific tool, like maybe this light EQ, I can just turn that off and then turn it back on and you can see the impact it's had on the photo. Now coming down, there's additional tools here. And again, not a full demo of everything or a full tutorial, but there's a lot you can do. Soft focus, cross-processing, split toning, which I absolutely adore. And that works just like it does in most other products. You pick a, a highlight color, and then you pick a saturation level. In this case, I'm gonna go a little bit pinker there. And maybe in the shadows, maybe I wanna do a pull back a little bit on that blue. So I'm gonna do a little bit like that. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna pull that not quite so high on the yellow. And in fact, I might go to, that's a little bit of a richer blue. That looks pretty cool actually. But I think I'm gonna land for the shadows hue a little bit over here, kind of between the red and the yellow, kind of an orange overall. But if I turn off split toning, you can see there's the before and the after. If you've never used split toning, please, please make it a good friend of yours. I love it, it's super powerful. If you like to adjust colors, I do if you've been here before, so that may be obvious. Anyway, so there's a basic edit. Once again, show original and show current state. I like where I am with this. I want to show you a couple more things because they have some really cool stuff. And as I understand it, in version 7 of this Mac product, there's a new a couple of tools. There's a develop brush, there's a linear gradient, and there's a radial gradient. So as the name implies, these, uh, like if you click on develop brush, it gives you the brush you can see there. And all you can do is you can brush stroke into the photo and make adjustments according it, Accordingly, it operates very much like the local masking tool in Luminar or the local mask kind of thing that you can do in Lightroom. So 
For example, I'm gonna just local mask and just brush right over here. Now this is not what I recommend doing to this photo because this is gonna be really sloppy. I'm doing it simply just to point out how the tool works, but let me turn off show brush strokes. And now I'm in the develop brush menu. If I click that again, you'll see it collapses and what's left are the edits I made before. When you click it, that little menu expands. So I created brush strokes there and now that I've done that, I'm just gonna drag the exposure. Again, not recommending that you do this specific thing to your photo. I just wanted to show you how it impacts. So I brushed it in and then I dragged the exposure up. I've also got saturation if I wanted to do that. Again, that looks terrible. I'm just pointing out how it works. I'm not saying this is how I would handle the photo. But the cool thing is you've got multiple brushes down here. So you can come down here, click this, and highlight that second brush, and now I've got a second brush. So maybe I come over here and I paint into the sky. If you wanna show the brush strokes, you can just click that to show them again. You can see what I've done. And now I'm just gonna show you if I saturate that section and increase the exposure. I'm just doing the same thing I did down below simply because it's gonna be very visible. I know it looks terrible. Don't hold it against me. I'm just sh showing how it works. But that's how it works. You have, from what I can tell, eight different brushes that you can apply here and stick onto your photo. And this basically is a local masking tool to let you paint in whatever it is you wanna do. So exposure, saturation, fill light, contrast, or clarity. Now, if you're done, you can hit reset and get rid of that mess because that looked terrible. And I'm gonna turn that off and I'm back down to not having any brushes active on this photo. But hopefully that gives you an idea, despite how visually unpleasing that may have been to look at, it gives you an idea of how that works. So that's pretty cool. And the other thing is you also have a linear gradient and a radial gradient that will allow you to do that. So a brush, a radial, and a gradient tool to come in and do these custom edits. Okay, now that we're finished with that section, I do wanna pop over here to detail because you've got sharpening, noise reduction, chromatic aberration and defringing. So as you can imagine, you just drag these sliders. You can see the preview in this upper left corner to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. I find that the sharpening works just fine and the noise reduction isn't bad either. Um, you can just come in here and drag this to the right. Just keep in mind, it's a bit of a delicate dance between sharpening and noise reduction because sharpening will create a little bit more crispiness and the noise reduction, of course, will smooth things out. So you wanna kind of balance that, but just be careful, season to taste, as they say. But those tools are included as well. Next up is geometry. So here you've got rotate, straighten, crop, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna skip over that. It works as kind of expected. And so this last section is repair where you have both heal and clone. I've spent very little time with this, but I do notice one thing, like there's a spot here. If you just go and click on it, it is gonna ask you to right click on the image to define a source uh, before you're using this tool. So that even though that's the healing, not the clone, it's operating the way I think a clone and stamp would operate. So you actually come in and let's say I right click there and then click here and it'll take that spot out just fine. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Again, the tool is new to me. This is a first impression video, but that's a, a quick tour, probably not that quick actually, of all the different things that you can do. Also note that these tabs, if you've used them, there's a little dot next to the, uh, the name of the tab to indicate that some things have been in use there. So this is not a full edit. As I said, I'm really just kind of walking through some of the things you can do with this tool, but my original, my current state, it's an improvement. It's not exactly what I would do to the photo, but more than anything, I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the tools, how they operate and what's included here in ACDC Photo Studio 7 for Mac. Good product, I'll use it some more. I like it, I need to learn more about it, and I'll be back in the future with additional videos as I learn more about this product but that's my first impression video. Overall, I give it a thumbs up. It's a good product. I really like all the capability in the catalog, which is back here on the Manage tab. Do I wanna save changes to the image? Yes, I wanna save that. And now I'm back in the catalog and you will note that the changes are here. However, they are non-destructive, so I can reset that and still get to my raw file. But I think there's a lot of power and capability here in this kind of catalog file browser section, which is one of the reasons I'm interested in the product as a potential Lightroom replacement. Anyway, that's enough. We've been talking about this product for a while. I'll be back with more. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. But again, it's pretty new to me. Regardless, hope you're doing whatever it is you're doing and having fun editing in the process. Thanks for watching, my friends. Take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon and adios.